Okay, folks, on this episode, we're going to be doing some camera blocking. We're helping a director from the UK block a four-page scene. And this is actually super hard because four pages is an eternity of potential boredom if you don't find a way to make it interesting. Joining us is a director friend of mine, Marcus Stokes, who is a powerhouse of raw camera blocking skill. So if you like camera blocking, you'll love this episode. So on the episode is Tristan Ofield, a UK director who's had a lot of success on the festival circuit with especially his sci-fi short White Lily. And helping us is Marcus Stokes, a TV director on shows like Criminal Minds, Arrow and Roswell, New Mexico. And before that, he was visual effects supervisor or CGI artist on an endless parade of blockbusters like Star Wars Episode One, Spider-Man, The Matrix and lots of other things. Prep Show is brought to you by Hollywood Camera Work. Check out Directing Actors, a huge course that teaches you how to create strong and deep performances. Remember you can stream as a video show or listen as a podcast. And remember to like and subscribe to get notified of new episodes. Okay, hi Tristan, how are you? I'm good, Pear, thanks. <laughs> holding, up, holding up well like everyone else. Yeah. So um, we're going to work a little bit on, uh, on a scene for a thing that you're doing. Can you explain what that thing is? I don't, I'm not sure I fully understand it yet. Okay, so I've been working on a web series for the last few months. Um, it started off as a kind of basically a practice ground because I wanted a bunch of shorts that I could practice working through the masterclass and then directing actors. And I didn't want to have to wait for what the next project was going to be. Um, so I convinced, I knew I couldn't write an entire series myself. So I convinced nine of like nine writers that I know to contribute material towards it on a shared theme. And, and the theme is guys having conversations about girls. It's almost like a, a reverse Bechdel test. So they could write anything they wanted as long as they wanted, as short as they wanted, but it had to be guys talking about girls in some way. Okay. And so, so we've got uh, three episodes in the bag already that are all very different. Um, it's an mm. anthology series. So these, it, are, these are shot? These are, yeah, I've got three that are already shot, okay. um, and this is going to be the fourth. This is the first one that takes place in a different time. Um, so this is a period piece. This is set in the late 1960s in Oman. So I, I got the, screen, uh, the, the scene up here on the screen, and uh, it's a pretty long scene in one location. That's going to have its own kind of difficulties. It, it does. See, I'm... I'm heavily influenced by a show called In Treatment, which was um, a Gabriel Byrne show and the mm -hmm. whole, he's a therapist and the show, the episode never leaves his office. It's like um, the patient comes along and then we have like a little play for, for 20 minutes in the same place. So yes, being in one space does present issues, but at the same time, you have different areas of the room that you can kind of move to and create mm -hmm. scenes within scenes sure. if you want. Um, I kind of don't want to overdo it. Basically, what what I have blocked, I am happy with. I would shoot it, you know, tomorrow. But you know, it's always interesting to see what somebody else's perspective is. And you, I find I can always get to a more interesting place when working with somebody else than I ever can if I'm working just solely by myself. Um, so you know, let's kind of let's start afresh and and see where we end up. Do you want to explain the scene? Like, let, sure. Let's not do so. Let's not do a read through. If you just want to like explain the scene and just the major beats in the scene. Yeah, sure. So we're looking. This is between two officers. Uh, this is set in a tent on a base in Oman. So it's two officers, uh, Captains Knox and Captain Austin. Um, they're both exactly the same rank, but they have a different status. Um, Captain Knox is a base officer. He's the new one of the new base uh, administrative officers. So that means he's, he's a desk jockey, basically. And then Captain Austin is a medical officer who goes out to the front line as well as working at the base. Uh, generally, base officers are sneered upon by frontline troops. They're referred to as REMPs, which so stands for Knox, So Knox is a base officer and Knox Austin is a, a front line. Officer. That's right. Are these guys, okay. is Knox a superior? No. So they're both exactly the same rank, but they have different jobs. So on, in terms of 
operations on the base, that's Knox's territory. And that's, and in this case, Austin needs something from Knox. So Knox is brand new, he's only just arrived. Austin has been in country for about a year or so. Um, and the scene is a, a mixture of, of acceptance and respect. Knox wants to be recognized by Austin as a proper, quote unquote, a proper officer. And Austin needs something that only Knox can grant, which is a signature to allow the base to have a swimming pool because the country is about to open up and oil companies are coming in and oil companies have secretaries and they're all guys out by themselves and they haven't seen a woman in ages. So they think if they get a swimming pool, they can start inviting secretaries round. <laughs> okay. And so, um, but you were saying that they need to pretend that it's something else. Yeah, they, so they are in uh, a Muslim country and also and so to start with they can't really specify the reason for it also they're on a military base so asking for a swimming pool isn't really would be frowned upon um so they have to disguise it as something else and in this case they're disguising it as a, a firefighting water reserve tank mm -hmm. um so but let, let me understand the dynamics of the scene so austin has to ask for this or get the signature basically without revealing what's really going on yeah he has he to like dodge it yeah he doesn't know austin austin's sorry he doesn't austin doesn't know knox knox is new so to begin with he's trying to put one over on him and see if he can actually sneak it past by just disguising it as a water reserve tank okay And, and the dynamic from the other side, from Knox's perspective, is that he doesn't feel like a real soldier because he's an administrative dude. So he like he like needs some props. He needs some recognition from a real soldier. That's correct. So to begin with, he tries to ask Oscar, Austin whether he co can come out on the base, uh, patrolling with him. Yeah. And Austin turns it down because Austin basically doesn't want to get the guy killed. Um, because his snobbish view is the guy's not a real soldier. If he comes out with me, he's going to get killed or worse, he's going to kill me. Okay. Uh, so Knox realizes then, once he realizes what's actually happening in front of him with the request, the way to get respect and to gain the respect as being quote unquote a, qu a proper officer is to grant the request for the swimming pool. Okay. In the meanwhile, we've been joined by Marcus Stokes. Hello. <laughs> Hello, good morning, everyone. <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's see. Did you have a chance to look at the scene? Absolutely. The, yeah, I've looked at the scene. I've taken a look at the blocking diagram. I only had one question about the scene, okay. which was, um, it seemed to me that Knox was new to the base. Correct. Um, and I just wanted to confirm that that was the case. So, even though Austin needs uh, approval from Knox, Knox is brand new. Is that correct? That's 100% correct. Okay. So I had a couple of things that, that bugged me. Um, can, I, can I bring up some negatives? Sure. <laughs> some potential negatives? That's, that's wait, why wait, I'm wait. here. Before we, before we hop into that, yeah. like, are you, are Pear, are you talking specifically about the blocking? Or the It was just itself? about the blocking. I, I, don't feel okay. I, can in, I don't feel I can intrude on the scene. I don't understand the scene well enough sure. to judge it. Let me, um, before we do that, if you don't mind, Perry, sure, can we just ahead. get Tristan to just sort of like run us through this blocking diagram? Okay, absolutely. And Tristan, it doesn't have to be super specific, just so we can get an idea of how the camera work is supposed to be supporting the, um, uh, the, the script. You know, you just, we're, we're planning on doing this and doing that. It doesn't have to be like this camera is this and this camera is okay, that. Just sure. give us a general idea so we can kind of place ourselves okay, okay. In, in your scene. Let me understand. The goal is still that we're going to uh, like reboot our brains afterwards and then try to do one that may or may not incorporate these things. Or are we trying to extend this one here? No, no, no. The goal is just to understand what this represents. Okay. Good point. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Where do you want to start? Right. Okay, so, I mean, the scene starts with the two chaps already sat, uh, they're sat either side of a desk inside a tent. So this is okay, over so, here, right? So this is this stuff, uh, can, is my mouse moving this? Well, this is uh, you can't mouse. point, only I okay, can Okay, so this, so the two, so you've got, uh, you've got your desk and then you've got a red and a blue. Right, yes. Austin is red, Trist, uh, Knox is blue. That is correct. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so, uh, so Austin is sitting with his back to the door. Okay, um, so we've got 
the cameras that are grouped sort of directly around them are pretty much shot reverse shot so we've got over the shoulders and we've got a pair of internal reverses that match um, halfway through the scene let me think where i've written it down so halfway through the scene there's a beat it's when we it's when we start moving the conversation towards the actual discussing of the swimming pool um, the cameras all the cameras the internal reverses and the um, over the shoulders all cross the line at the same time so we've shot okay. half the scene on one side and when we change the story beat at that point we push on to the other side i'm gesturing with my hands and i have absolutely no uh -huh. idea why um and then it's the, okay. <laughs> the green cameras that we've got on the left hand side of the screen uh we've got some static cameras there that are just there for covering the uh the postman when he comes in okay um, to and then can in. you really quickly talk about um the 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 movement of Knox? Right, the blue guy. He yeah. starts seated. Uh, does he stand up and sit down? Is that the, sh yes, the that's short what, move? Yes, that is. That's a stand. It's a stand up and a sit down at a point, and then he walks over to he walks over to the far side. There's going to be a table with some uh, some table with some glasses on or something. Correct to do the drink to yeah. do the drinking glass. And you that's know what? Whoever reads this scene is going to understand all this. I just. You know what I mean? Like, so it's not super complicated sure. in general. A pair, you can interrupt me anytime. You, no, no, you go ahead, to. go ahead. You got it. Um, in in general, um, when I when I use do blocking diagrams, and I always do them in in Shot Designer, so I'm very familiar with what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, the, really, the number one goal of this is to inform yourself and then to inform the crew. And I find it very hard to read this diagram. Okay. Right. And what I mean by that is there's too many cameras on the page. So Specifically, let, let's take one really basic example. So you've got your over the shoulders and what you're calling an internal reverse. That is camera 3B, camera E, and then on the other side, cameras D and C. Wait a second. Right? Cameras E, camera B, right? On, middle on of the one frame. side. Over the shoulder and close up on and, one side. Yep. And then you've got the sort of corresponding shots on the other side. Sure. So number one, um, and again, I'm just trying to clean the diagram up so people can see it, people can read it. I don't believe you need both the, what you're calling an internal reverse is a reverse with inside the, um, the person, meaning one it's camera's over his shoulder, it's one close camera's up. closer, but it's the same camera position. Right. So I don't, I don't know that you need both those cameras indicated. Uh, it shot could designer be. allows you to um, just add another version or something. Yep, fair and enough. The way that I do it is I just would go, so camera E in particular, camera E is an echo. It says OTS on Knox. Yep. I would have a second version below that that just says tighter. Yeah. <laughs> right? cool. yeah, 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 and fine. That means that, or you could say single Knox or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the other really quick tip that I would give you is even though it's kind of um, indicated on the, um, on the diagram which shoulder he's over, I always indicated in my in my diagram. So some of these notes are just general, like the way that I've been using, um, the way that I've learned how to do blocking diagrams and specifically with Shot D Designer um, to make it clearer to my AD, my cinematographer, whatever, right? And initially, you know, people are so used to seeing like really ugly sketches in pencil and not really understanding, oh, we do blocking diagrams, but nobody looks at them, they're just for the director, right? But as I've been doing more and more shows and using this uh, software, at a certain point, like right after we, um, right before we do our rehearsal, everybody comes around my iPad or my printout or whatever it is. I like to have a printout just because it never runs out of battery. They all stand down. They all come around me and they go, I'll take E, you take B, I'll take C. So everyone on the crew is starting to use this because they're clear. If they're not clear, then there's no point to having it. Sure. Right. So I would do, I would do OLS over yeah. left shoulder or ORS over right shoulder. Of course, this camera is a bad example because you're crossing the line, so that would shift, blah, 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 but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely, right? yeah, that's The great. other thing, um, there's a, so I'll just run through a, a couple of really quick notes. Um, mm -hmm. um, so the other thing is, one, you should color these things, right? <laughs> right, so uh, you should just use the different colors of the cameras, it makes it a lot easier because your DP will go, I'll take pink, uh, you camera A operator, you take blue, you take purple, and it's, it's really easy for people to communicate. Um, uh, secondly, I think that your cameras should be listed in terms of setups and order, right? So when you're doing a blocking diagram, 
everyone when they do when they're talking about doing directing we've seen it in many many books right where they're like i don't know exactly what my coverage is going to be but i know how i'm going to start the scene i know how i'm going to end it right we, we've all heard that probably before mm -hmm. right so you should kind of know what your opening shot is and your ending shot and your camera should be laid out in that order i'm not saying it's not because we haven't really gone through it but the thing that sort of um, the thing that I always indicate on one of my cameras is where the reverse is. I'm sorry, not the reverse, the turnaround, right? So, for example, let's say you're starting looking at Knox. So looking from the door toward Knox, right? You would start with maybe I don't know. Maybe you're starting with uh, the big tracking master there on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, I can't camera camera, camera A. a. Camera A, yeah. So maybe you're starting with camera A, right? And that was obviously it's translating, so it's a little bit weird. But you're probably going to have a master in there somewhere that doesn't cross the quote unquote line. Um, and then you're going to do something else. Then you're going to do something else. And at a certain point, you're going to write on a camera, turn around or reverse. And that means everything on this side is shot, and then we turn around, everything on that side is shot. So you know kind of where you're halfway, and if you want to... Well, we should, debate, wanna... we should debate the merit of the line cross before we solve a better way to do it, because I... A hundred percent. I object. I object a lot to the line cross. <laughs> so, okay, I mean, so this... let's dive in now. Those are just a couple of quick notes on... Can I jump in the there with, a, with a few yeah. more notes? So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, so now... I mean, don't feel bad. Right now, we're just like piling on you with uh, things. I don't that, feel bad <laughs> at all, that, mate. This is why I'm here. With. I agree. I agree with the notes that were so far, but um, the line cross there is a lot of work for something that has almost yeah. no cash value on screen. You basically have to shoot the scene twice you to have, do that line Well, cross. it's not just that. It's that, at, okay, at least if you could decide which camera is the camera that's going to carry you to the other side, then that's the only one that would have to be a tracking shot. But to do that difficult tracking shot four times and only use one of them, I think that's too extravagant. Um, okay, so, the, well, so you would suggest if it's not the actual move, it's the merit of the move that you're you're incensed by it would be all right choose it would be <laughs> no, I, I, all right no no it'd be it'd be choose if you're going to do this choose where you want to be who you want to be looking at when you do the line cross which camera it is and just do yeah. it the one time but let me, let right? me point out the the let me point out the well, absolute swamp you're stepping into here because if you if you whether you have one camera or four cameras that are going to carry you to the other side, that's going to need to happen at a specific time. You're going to yep. run the scene. You're going to say, okay, when he says that line, hold for two seconds and then start tracking. And you're now, I mean, you, you, you have now just bolted the timing of the scene to the floor. And you, you will struggle with this one in the edit. And I will bet that you're going to end up cutting into the end of the tracking shot because you need it to be in some other camera. I mean, the, the worst part is to lock down the timing of the scene by just putting like a concrete brick in the middle of it there and say, I must be in this camera right here. Well, the, the other, I, I completely agree with you, Pear, on that. But the other thing I would say is like, let's step, let's, let's take a couple steps back, right? Mm -hmm. Since we were, we're talking really specifically about this, you know, obviously we want to work on the blocking that, that you had planned out. Mm -hmm. But I guess my point is, um, I'm just kind of curious why you decide um, to have them seat it when you come into the scene. Right. And where, where I'm going with that is sitting up and, and uh, standing up and sitting down is a really powerful way to get motion in your scene to convey different to get to con convey different things. Right. And I just want to know um, what your thinking was there in terms of them starting seated. He stands up, he sits down, he goes to make a drink, he comes back and sits down again. The if that's what you want to do, then I would bury the line cross in there if that's what you want to do. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like. One part of the scene happens when they're sitting down, then they stand up, and as he comes and sits back down, then we move across the line. I'm still unclear on the merits of moving across the line on this scene because nothing also, you, that you dramatic have a, is happening. So you have a great point with not being started sitting down, sitting down because if one of them is kind of uh, a little bit trepidating coming into it, I don't know, am I, I'm in somebody else's space. You have no way to illustrate that if they're already comfortably seated. Like there's no way to put your hat in your hand and walk in and be a little bit nervous if they're already seated. You, 
because it is some it is one person who is in another person's space and right and you miss out on the opportunity to show that don't you I, I to be honest i thought that would actually be carried from the fact that it was going to be very i was going to i was thinking about dressing them differently in the sense that i was thinking of putting Knox like basically in a vest and shorts to show that it was and with his bed behind him in the shot whereas um you've got austin framed with a door behind him so in, in my head it would make it clear as to whose space that they were in however okay. the the this is a in this it, scene in its nature is very static and one of the reasons i wanted to come in on the show was i thought do you know what i'd like to strip this away and i'd like to see what the opportunities are for movement within this so what, if, what i would yeah. what i would the only thing i would caution you about that is actors have a tendency to move toward comfort right mm -hmm. meaning if you sit them down it is very difficult to get them get up. them up again i mean you can tell them to get up right but now you're nitpicking them on yeah. this line stand up pick up the glass blah 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 right if you say for example um and i'm again b bad example knox is busy doing paperwork you know doing paperwork he can't see the door right or he's organizing his bookshelf or he's whatever and austin um austin interrupts him right now they're both standing and then he can go oh take a seat and then he can sit down maybe Knox remain standing while he's sitting down that shows a power dynamic maybe the opposite maybe there's just a lot more opportunities some of which you'll discover on the day right mm. but if you just sit them both in the seats i mean i really think when you get into the edit you're gonna be concerned right yeah, and, and you're gonna be like when are they getting up when are they getting up when are they getting up then if they're seated then that means something and you've made a conscious decision so to have sitting, sitting down is a beat now yeah well one of the other things I, I was keen to come on is is that and now i've just totally lost my train of thought i'm sorry <laughs> no, I yeah, too much. <laughs> no no not at all not at all um i like so would you say like for example if if let's take your idea, Mark, of, of, of having, you know, Knox say he's rearranging his books and, um, and Austin comes in, then you're kind of giving the actors the opportunity to say, OK, well, when you feel right, yes, I want you to take a seat and then you can build the kind of blocking from there. Absolutely. Is kind of that what you're mm -hmm. saying? That's how that's how I do it every day. OK, I'm like, I'd like you to start here, you to start there at some point. I'd like you guys to remain to, to take a seat. You know, uh, but feel free to fix that drink. Feel free to get up when the bottle comes in. Feel free. And then you just sort of discover it, right? I just don't want you to have a plan so rigid that it leaves no room for discovery. That's Fine. all. You know That's what I mean? That's great. Well, what I, well, I would not like just, to do. Not just discovery. It's actors or plus minus 10 seconds on every timing. Like, I mean, the closest you can get to a timing is somewhere around that line. And... So, for example, if you need dialogue to fit with a camera move like that, you are, you're in for a world of hurt because it's, it's really difficult to get that and you're not going to get it and then it's going to be really difficult to edit. So Yeah, I mean, and, and in general, like the general rule about crossing the line is there's nothing wrong with it. You can do it whenever you want, but it needs to, it needs to be, generally, it tends to be a moment of, uh, a big moment or a reason why he, someone is like, when you cross the line, things look a little weird, right? So as long as whatever's happened in the scene is a little weird or a little different, a little off or whatever, then you can motivate it. I just mm -hmm. didn't see anything in this particular scene that justified crossing the line. And I know you're like, I want to do, I want to insert some directing into it, but I feel like there's a lot more movement that the actors can give you than just sliding the camera and leaving the actors where they are. Can so we, I always can we resolve to what to do with? I mean, are are you super married to having that line cross in there, Tristan? Are you kidding me? I, I actually thought coming on, to, I thought the first thing we were going to do once we talked through the diagram was literally wipe it clean and start again. So yeah, I'm no. happy. Well, that's he, what, sure, that's sure, what sure. I'm expecting. But that's what I'm expecting. So yeah, shred it. Let's start okay. from scratch. Okay, good. Well, that's, if you, that, if that's you, good. If, so we now cut four hours out of your shooting day just by not having that line no wait well that's the that's the one thing like i wanted i wanted yeah. to see if there was a if we could find a developing master that would work that we could then fill in with other cameras or whether that was not the way to do it i'm my I'm at okay. your mercy right now oh goodness that's a lot of responsibility <laughs> yes it is so we're you know um, make it make it better so um how many how many cameras are going to be on the shoot how many cameras just do they the, have? just the one so one just at a time one. okay okay yeah, that's it. 
Would you consider, okay, let's let, okay, so this was kind of my second uh, beef with this scene here. You really should consider shooting at least two cameras, even if it means lesser cameras and getting two sizes, because getting through four pages of, of dialogue like that, it is murder. But I, I, that genuinely doesn't concern me. I've, I've done this a hundred times. Well, it's not that. It's that the scene is that long. And in order to get each of your angles, the, the, the actors need to keep washing over the beats and washing over the beats until they're anticipating the whole thing. With a scene this long, their performances are going to get worse quickly. Just yeah, because, the second the yeah. second camera is going to allow your actors to not burn out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I 100% agree. You need as... I, I would say uh, a scene like this, at least two, maybe three, <laughs> right? If you can afford it. Three is it pushing depends. it, but I would yeah, consider, course, I'd happily consider two for yeah. the sake of the acting. Definitely. Two, two is, I think two is a minimum for, for a four page scene if you're trying to actually get through it and you know, you've got a, you don't have all the money in the world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. And especially if you're doing this with more or less the same lighting set up for everything, it's really, I mean, cameras are cheap. I mean, unless you're, unless you're shooting with Ari cameras, you can get another one and just get somebody to hold, hold the tripod and, and you'll be so happy. Yeah. Okay, good. So what do we want to do? There's going to be a table over here. So I'm just, I'm, I'm replicating your scene from before. Okay, cool. I can't see and that. So, I feel free to shift, like, you know, I'm not married to where the, uh, the, t the chair and table is either, so... Um, okay. I mean, it feels like that's where it would be. Yeah, it feels like that's where it would be. Add a little <laughs> desk to the corner, just dupe that table and shrink it down a little bit, Pear. Okay. So put it wherever saying, you think it might so be. So you want to put know. a table, like, what, here? Um, I don't know, wherever we think. You know, I mean, that, that, the, um, the beauty of a table that small is when you're blocking it, you can move wherever you want. <laughs> okay. But I would, okay. I would assume that you would want that table to be on the other side of Austin so that the, so that Knox, if Knox is the one making the drinks, am I correct about that? Yeah. Uh, uh, if he's going to go and get my glass, I think. Let me double check. So, so let me just yeah. point. So this is Austin who. Correct. Okay. So if the table's on that side, then, you know, he we get to look at his back as he goes over there to make the drink. Mm -hmm. And so you can have some turning and things like that. Actually, Do you know what I mean? I think it's actually Austin that goes to make the drink. Let me just uh, give this one a name Cause here. Because he um, the yeah. bottle gets delivered to him. So I agree, yeah. Up. If it's Austin that makes the drink, then yeah. there's even more reason for it to be on his side of the desk. Because you, you don't want to invade Knox's sort of uh, castle. Yeah, correct. I, I wasn't paying attention. I was saving. What did you guys conclude? Uh, you, the table is correct where it is. Okay. All right. So this is yeah, like it's a, Austin a, that gets the a glasses, whiskey table so. somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so, Marcus. You, you want to know? Yeah, you want to know what I would do? Yeah, go ahead. I would start. Um, I would start. I'm going to make I the normally start with more. the basics, and then, I try, and then I look at it, and then I try to make things a little cooler. Yeah. But I'd put one camera outside the door looking in. Okay. And then one cam, and then a secondary. Um, so make both of these green because this will be like setup one. One camera will be there, mm -hmm. right? So you can see maybe the door open or maybe him do an entrance. And then one camera lower lower corner inside the room, and that'll be your master. So you mean here or here? Yeah, uh, to the first position. So you can oh. shoot him at the same time, right? Boop boop, right? Okay, okay. good. So Sorry. now you get an, you get an entrance. You get like a grandiose. A door opens. You see knocks. As a door cracks, you don't know who Austin is yet. Blah blah blah. Um, yeah. Okay. And so this one here, we're gonna make a uh, master. Right. Ish. And you can you can you can put a move on that if you want it to to sort of keep his sort of spirit alive. You mm -hmm. could track that directly. What's a move Just like towards them or side to side? I would go side to side. Okay. Good. So this is a master ish. Yeah. Okay. Good. And I and I would um I'd make it go more um horizontal on your screen so it gets clo a little bit closer to them as it goes like something like that. Well, you know I, what I mean? I get that, but then if you want to go back and forth, then it's pulling suddenly. It's and, pulling focus well, or pulling what? no no well I mean so it's so it's pushing first and then at some yeah. point it reverses direction and that means if we cut to it then it's going backwards now yeah of course yeah and yeah. and if you have multiple takes of that master and you cut to them then you're suddenly gonna going yo -yo, forward yeah. suddenly then you're gonna you're gonna start yo yo yeah well it's not just that you're gonna be cutting from forwards to backwards to forwards and 
I mean, I yeah, think I call, I call that yo-yoing. Okay, <laughs> so because right, it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. How much of that d- survives in your edits? Uh, none of it. Okay, good. I mean, the way I would, I was just trying to, I was just trying to like kind of keep what he was trying to do alive. I would just park that thing in the corner. To be honest, okay. I wouldn't put a, a move. I would put it on a slider and just have it nudge a little bit. So yeah. So so. This is and this is also kind of the style decision. So I I I didn't even know about the show uh, Tristan that you're referencing this with the intrigue okay. show. But I watched that, and I thought, wow, that is very static. It is, but but the uh, it's different because you've got such heavyweight actors. It's yeah. not about the it's not about the camera work at all. No. Um, but they get really long runs of their takes and the performances are fantastic and it is, it's extremely static. And I was kind of concerned that maybe what I had already done with the exception of the line cross, um, it had just fallen into this flat area of shot, reverse shot, which is why I wanted mm-hmm. to see if we could find more life. I mean, and more I guess it does work. But I think once yeah. they start moving, that problem goes away. Yeah, I, I once agree. Once your actors you. start moving, then the the whole like master single single, that problem I think disappears okay. when you when I, you start using the. Actors. I have an idea for a shot, and so this is what I. So this is also a blocking technique, which is uh, when you have an idea, just put it in and um, yep. and then see if it fits with anything. So. Here's my idea. One of these cameras here is going to end up being an over-the-shoulder. We'll just... Uh, well, do you want to give the over-the-shoulder some different colors here? Uh, yeah, that's just... Uh, what, yeah, absolutely. I, and I just go in order, right? So then, so <laughs> so then after agree. a while... So, my idea wasn't an over-the-shoulder, yeah. though. I, I, there's more to it. <laughs> so yes. the idea would be that... Um, oh, that was a mistake. Okay, well, we'll do it. Uh, I'll swap them. So the point is that something that ends in an over the shoulder, because if you say that he's going to be walking from over here, for well, let's say that, I don't know, let's say that he comes in here and, and doesn't actually, he, like he stands here like a nice, like a good boy until he's told to sit. And then when he's told to sit, the first long part of the conversation then happens here after they sit down and we just take our time nice and long to actually get into this over the shoulder. I like those, these kind of late arrival shots because... Yeah, I, I, I'm quite keen on those as well because they, they develop and they end up somewhere. They end up somewhere useful and they evolve for like a whole minute. There's only, there's a problem with using them though because yeah. if, see here's, here's what's going to go wrong. You're going to have a reverse camera here. You're going to have some static coverage in the end position and the moment you cut to that, it's super weird to cut back to this one. Yeah, if it's still moving, absolutely. If it's still moving, it's like it. suddenly somebody turned back time. Oh, we're back. It's like deja vu. So, but you could always run another version that's locked, right? In the in the end position. You should. Well, you you really should because once you cut out of this one, you can't get back into it. Do you agree with that, Marcus? Uh, unless there's a matching shot on the other side, right? You, you, your, your options are to do another run, mm-hmm. which is either locked okay, okay. over Austin's shoulder. Or you have to duplicate that camera move on the other side, and then you, they both inch toward their final. And you'd have to do that if you want to. Cut I agree. Back I agree. Um, but the then thing, we're back the, into almost timing problems that we had you're with, not, with you're, the line you're cross, not, right? You're not. No. That's the thing. The actors can do whatever they want. It's up to the dolly grip to land on the line that you want to land on. And if he has the script on, I mean, he's he's timing it to the script, so he'll accelerate or accelerate depending on what's needed, and he'll arrive on the right line. It's actually not hard to do. Okay. The other thing is this move doesn't go backwards, so you don't run into the yo-yoing problem. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So should we just leave this in here and then maybe kill it later? Yeah, sure. Fine. Yeah. Um, I'm cu- just with, with Austin standing, he's not, we're jumping into the scene midway through conversation. Stuff's already happened. So he can be standing and sit down, but it needs to be something other than being at, than Knox allowing him to sit. Like they've right. already been sat in here for a while. So we need to find something, some other arbitrary reason for him to be, what were you to saying? be standing. What's this about already being sat in there for a while? Well, if you, if you, the scene starts with them already kind of midway through conversation. Um, yeah. Okay, let's just. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that's out. super obvious, but if you're then saying that's if, the case, like, if, well, no, if I, it, it sounds if, like all we've missed is oh, a that could be anything. You're absolutely right. Tristan, that's inter- no, if, Tristan, if you're, you're reading, you're, you're stuck on how you imagined it. I think. I think this could okay. be used in any. I mean, this bloody heat is um, okay. Well, that's actually uh, Knox. 
he could be coming in the door and Knox, this bloody heat is unbearable. I don't know how you cope. And Austin says, you'll get used to it. You could do that coming in slowly with the hat in your hand, or you could al already be sitting down. This can be used any way you want. And then it's just a tweak to that line four. So where it says, OK, then that's Wednesday finished. We can just start with Thursday. We need to start examining the new intake. And then it's almost like the start of a scene, isn't it? So, yeah, we can tweak. That would work. Well, are you talking about cutting out the beginning of the scene? That wasn't. No, I'm just on about I'm just on He's about just saying cutting dialogue a line four. Yeah. Alludes to the fact that they've been talking about some the contents of Wednesday that are done. Ah, uh, OK, OK, OK. So if we want to go with this, which I, I have no objection to, if we, I just need to make a tweak to line four and cut off just the beginning of that. And the whole bit about that's Wednesday done. Couldn't it Thursday? We need you to examine the. Couldn't it just the, be Knox that's done with Wednesday? That's what he's been chewing on for a while. I suppose it could be. Anyway, the point is that you can you can like fix this in a little rewrite. Yeah, that's that's the point I'm making. Okay, I do think that it is important that they're not just sitting there. So I think that's a rewrite that's worth it. Okay, let's go with it. Okay. Um, Okay, what other ideas do we have? So I guess he's going to come through the door, right? I don't see why you wouldn't have him come through the door. Entries and exits are always really cool. Yeah. I mean, they, they help you sort yeah. of cinematically. So I'm going to so have I him don't... walk from out here. Does he come like down through a hall? How, what's outside? Outside is, is just barren. Um, it's just base outside. So oh. he's not in a corridor. It's just he's walking straight into. It. It's going to be either a tent or a bunk and a, a bunk. Okay. I well, then yet. then I'm going to do a, a creep towards the door that's a little slower than he walks. Those are nice. Okay. So it's, it's what I termed a sympathetic move that it's drifting in the same direction, but not as fast. But no, okay. I'm do you not like? I, by I the like this move. Do you like this move? I'm good with it, Marcus. Yeah. Okay. Where do you? Does anybody have an opinion on where he should end up? I mean, standing uh, from this move from walking in or what from walking mean? in. Yeah, I would have him not walk as far in to begin with. Yeah. I'd halve that distance. OK, sure. Yeah. So he's in somebody else's space. Yeah, exactly. And mm. that means we could probably put Knox away from the table doing something else already. OK, I like that. Um, well, actually, I don't know. Does it give him? Well, we're not trying to create authority for this guy, right? No, we're not, but we're, I, we are trying to set up the fact that th there's something that has taken place before this moment in time. Sure. So um, perhaps if, there's the, if it's the line about the heat, then let's have him, I know he's, he's, he's washing or sponging himself down trying to remain cool. Okay. There's a fly here. Get out of here. Okay, so a little thing to do that maybe over here. So the only danger is that every time people move, we need like a whole batch of cameras to cover it and... Before you know it, it's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But let's leave it here. I mean, Marcus. So, so why, why, don't, why don't we just start him um, on the, imagine Knox at the desk, okay. stands up, turns around 180, and walks three feet in the other direction. Mm. So his, so it's the, you know, the, the godfathery thing. You come oh, so in and you're looking at the back of him or something. Yeah, let's do it. Because then you get to do a character reveal on him as well. That, so. Yeah, that's where I'm going with that. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand it, though. Just uh, take Knox at the seated position, spin him around 180, and move him away from Austin. So, so I'm, put him I'm, on the I'm other get rid side of, this of that cam. Yep, so duplicate, I'm sorry, walk him three inches to the right. So over here. Like actually, yeah, like walk him there. Like move to or whatever. Move from or. Um, but is he walking from there or to there? He's walking from there. Okay, so he starts like turned away like this and then comes That's over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I understand. Yes. That way, now the setups work, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. But that's good because it's not, that's, we, we aren't talking about status, but we are talking about somebody else's living quarters. So yes. it's wicked because he gets to stand by the door. We get some, we get some hesitance and some anticipation. And we also get like Marcus, your godfather kind of opening as well. Mm -hmm. And we can stick the camera on his back. So we don't quite know who he is yet as well. It's nice. I like it. I'm just going to make my close ups purple because then, so you're saying we're going to have something like this maybe? Yep. Okay. Is the reveal important enough that we want to like punch in a little bit on it? Push. 
Uh, I don't think so. I, I think no. we'll get a, we'll get a little Spielbergy if we start doing. It'll, you know, it'll, 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 it'll look a little Twilight Zone if we start. The mo- like, yeah, the movie. Yeah, it's like really there's a whole general. realization there. <laughs> yeah, it's like <gasps> no, no. It's he's not the Oracle. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so how does the timing of the scene work coming in? So, so we have this shot coming in from the outside. Mm-hmm. Then he comes in, and what happens? We can just have we can have um, we can have a couple of beats while Knox is saying this heat's fucking killing me, and then he can t- he can say all that with his back to Austin waiting there, uh, and then Austin okay. can t- uh, sorry, and then Knox can turn around. I'll find. Where so this is kind of I've been expecting you. Yeah, basically. Okay, is that what you're going for character-wise? I, d- I don't have any objection to it. I don't think it changes the dynamic of the scene too much. Okay. I mean, re- really, at this point, we sort of start to getting, getting into the subtext, which I was a little bit unclear on. Like, uh, I guess, let me just pose it as a question. Is, like, is Austin trying to gauge how well Knox is going to be open to doing this clandestine thing are they sizing each other up it is you know what i mean like what's the what's the there's what's that's that's it the there's undercurrent ele- yeah there's elements of that that's exactly right basically austin wants to if he can if he can get the swimming pool without Knox actually having to explain to Knox what it is because they mm-hmm. they've never managed to get this to work in the past if mm-hmm. he can put it past him that's his plan but obviously it turns out that he can't actually put it past him Knox is that little bit too smart um so then it becomes right. a case of like okay how do I how do I get and this guy from to the other it? side Knox is a desk jockey kind of he's a administrative uh, soldier and doesn't think he I mean think he he ought to be a real soldier he ought to get respect from real soldiers so I guess he has some self-esteem stuff there hello is that was right? that a question sorry yeah, yeah. That's, that it's not it's not so much self-esteem it's not so much self-esteem I think it's more just kind of wanting to be seen on equal footing with right. the soldiers who are on the front lines which arguably they're not but somebody has to be at the base and do that job. So they're both, they are both equally important. It's about how, how they're seen in each other's eyes, I guess. But it sounds like Austin is trying to put one past him. Knox is pretty smart. Knox figures it out. Austin was like, rats, I'll have to try something else. And then Knox goes, but wait a second, we're going to do it. Yeah, right. That's, that's it. sort of that's the anatomy yeah. of the scene, right? That's it. I wish I could have explained it succinctly so, as well. So, <laughs> so the the big the big hoorahs in the in the script are when we discover that it's a swimming pool, and then at the end when Knox says we now have a swimming pool. Yeah. Right. So those are those are the two moments that we're kind of leading up to. Yeah. And everything else is tension and and sort of combativeness between the two, or like. Uh, two spies trying to outsmart each other or whatever That's like it, sure. yeah and there's also there's a, i think there's quite a decent beat where um do you want to point out where it is in the script we'll just scroll to it let's have a quick look um, it's when Knox goes up to get it's when Knox goes to get the the glasses so he's basically got this wonderful scotch i've i don't think I, it's some notes i've made here but i'm not sure how much of it is in this version of the script basically uh, the bottle that's been delivered to um to austin um is some wonderful scotch which has been sent from it was just come all the way from england so he goes over to pick up two glasses to think okay well i'll see if i can maybe lubricate Knox a little bit and make it quite an obvious bribe. Can you and point then, to where it is in the script? I, yeah, I'm just going to try. It. Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, line, line six? 20, no, right. it's uh, line 25. Okay. It should be what, I want to see what line okay. six is now. Yeah. Interesting. So you, that's, oh, yes, why, it, that's why we need the getting glasses thing in there. Yeah. Is there a mood? What's the mood change around this place? in the script how do you mean sorry for the well movie? i mean they're gonna the, the whole i mean they're sitting down before this right and then yep. he gets up oh uh, wait austin gets up it seems it seems weird that austin is fixing a drink in knox's office to me yeah it is it's him trying to take control at that point 
Okay, yeah, we can make that work. It can hold up. Because does the bottle get delivered to Austin or Knox? The bottle gets delivered to Austin, so it... Okay, so the, then we're okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So he's kind of like, look, he looks across, everyone's got, they all drink. So right. um, he looks across, he sees the glasses, and like, right, I'm gonna open this here and offer him a glass and see if I can kind of get him in that way. What's Knox's reaction to Austin kind of making himself at home here? Uh, he can be shocked by that. I it's mean, something is, is that like not cool? It's not, I think it's something that a, an officer, he wouldn't expect that to happen. But the officers who've been in country for a while um, all kind of ri not necessarily rifle through each other's stuff, but they're extremely familiar. They're not bound by those kinds of formalities. So Knox would be surprised by it. Um, but Knox also refuses to take the drink as well. So it's kind of like, ah, oh, damn, I've tried that. That approach has failed. Shit. Okay. But, okay, but practically... It is Austin who gets the glasses then. Yes, it's Austin that gets the glasses. I think I may have... Are we saying the glasses are over here? That's, a, that's, a, that's where we said it was, but that's a question for... for, for sure. Him. I don't really have an opinion. I mean, my, my opinion is more technical that that's like a lot of cameras we have dotted in different places. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and that bothers me just because what I would do I, I think all you'd have to do is put the table you'd mirror the table on the other side of the door right use a use the center line of the scene right as the mirror line and bring the table toward the blue camera the camera that creeps in over Austin's shoulder I was move, sorry I was example. just gonna do an, an access line but I forgot where this is it here no it's not here where's the access line it's on the camera I believe no, it's on the characters, the, but uh, access line. Oh, yeah, too. you're right. But if I can grab it here, then I can disconnect it, and now I just have an access line. Okay, so this yeah. is like roughly... We're trying sure. to stay you, on this side unless we're just sneaking over so there. So if you just mirror the table, the table that you just walked him to so, across that access line, so we now we're in our same coverage. Now we're fine. Yeah, you're right. Also... Yeah, I guess maybe it's a little... I mean, obviously, you look at the diagram. This is something you go wrong with with diagrams a lot, that you think that this camera here, oh, I could repurpose that. Um, but that's actually super annoying because this shot here is framed and has lenses for the push-in that it's going to need to do, and it's totally Correct. not going to work for this. It's going to be a brand-new shot anyway. And then right. in order to not lie, I would rather just actually put that, put that shot here. Of course. Yeah, yeah because, you know, you've got a... You, you, it's not a completely new lighting setup, but it is a new camera setup. It is a brand new camera setup. Okay. Yeah. Um, is you, he... you might be able to squeak it out, depending on how big the room is, but you might be able to squeak it out with camera B, right? C continue that move, uh, have that green camera slide over to the brown camera. Okay. Right? That you might really, be able to eke it out there. That depends but I, I on the geography would. of the real thing. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean... This is kind of typical. This is like uh, Blake Carrington in Dynasty or, you know, JR going to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so th is, there like a, a, is there like a less melodramatic way to do this? Because this shot is pretty melodramatic. Or it's basically he's hiding here. Is he, are we interested? Is he actually hiding something interesting here? He's, no, he's not hiding. He's thinking. Okay, but, this like, is a, but is it private? Is this privileged information we would be interested in? The look on his face. So the um, point is, up, is, on that, no, is it no useful to get no that kind of private shot on him here? I think it's useful. Um, I think it's useful, not in the melodramatic sense, but I think it's useful to one, see both faces, right? See the difference between, to see Austin thinking about what am I going to do with this new plan? Uh, I hear you on the JR melo melodrama of, of it all, but I think it could be useful and useful for the actors. Can I ask? Are, I, mean, I would are give you, it a were, try. When you said that, were you thinking of this as actually a deep staging shot with him in the background? And maybe uh, even like wanna, a, a yeah, focus I'd, rack? Yeah, I'd want to be able to see his face. Okay, so like we're we would like be shooting along an axis line here, and we're going to try to get both of them in the shot, and maybe do some interesting rack focuses, like. He, this guy thinks a thought and then we rack focus back or the other way around. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. It's also a line. I'd want Austin to turn back to him at some point as well. So I'd want to see a camera that catches that turn. 
But hang on, he's coming back right away, right? He's getting glasses, right? So this is just no, very he's, brief. He's, I'd like the option of him having some dialogue. I've written dialogue which you don't have in the script. There's a little bit of a little bit of talk about the quality of the scotch before he turns around to offer him the glass. But he could walk back to the table and offer it and not say no. I was just trying to get away from the table. So I'm I'm starting to feel a little bit of a dynasty and Alexis thing if we stay here for too long. Uh, um, um, it's so, not something that's worrying me. Okay. I think they are, I mean, I, well, this is my philosophy anyway with these types of shots is that they really do work, but they burn in really quickly that they become melodramatic in two seconds. But if you just kind of casually come through them and then move on, then you get their whole effect, but without the kind of the icky feeling <laughs> of, of staying in an overtly melodramatic, like a, yeah. Well, what, I, what I think is, uh, I, I agree with you, Pear. What I think is as soon as Austin turns back to Knox, the problem goes away. So yeah. it's really not an issue of his position in space. It's his orientation. I get right? that. Meaning, I, I get that. But as soon as he turns, this is also just regular coverage, like a camera here. No, like, I'm, I mean, I'd see I mean that. That, that would just then be like a camera here and a camera here just shooting them. At that point, it's just conversation. But I, I, there's got to be moments where that's going to happen, though, right? Sure, I'm just trying to group that around one place so we don't need sure. too many, like, duplicate could all we, the clusters of coverage. Could we start the deep staging shot that we've got, the orange one, the, the one that's looking at um, oh, that, that Austin's face? That, could we start with that tilted down on the glasses and tilt I, I up? I was going to say in? that or crane up or something. Yeah, but yeah. something, or boom up or something, yeah. Um, yeah, so unfortunately this one became camera C now, but this is, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to call this one the deep staging shot. And... Does it show the descriptions? It doesn't, but um, hang on. Um, we're just going to say that that's going to tilt up. These things, again, they're a little tricky to use because they're in the middle of the scene. Like, we're not opening on it. Like, opening on this would be super obvious, but mm. you need to time... I mean, because there's going to be conversation and then he starts walking over there, then you're going to cut to a camera that's down and then tilts up. It's almost like you're restarting the scene in the middle. I mean, it Perhaps, works, but, but it you, is, you have to be confident a, about the timing. Oh, it is a completely, it's a completely separate part of the scene, though, as well. So I think visually it's, it punctuates that quite nicely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't necessarily have to cut to it as it's on the glasses, but it would be nice there as an option. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for me, I would think uh, in addition to the tilt down, I mean, you could also if you hold on it a little bit before, like you, you know, when you do the coverage, you'll start on the tilt down. He'll walk up to the table. Right. That'll give you something to cut away to. Right. Yeah. Like we haven't even discussed like cutaways to sort of help save you when you find out that this moment didn't work. And and yeah. at the moment, I don't think we have that many landmarks that were in trouble. Do you know what I mean? Like sure. a lot of times you get in trouble when they're here, then they're there and they're there. Then you end up wanting to re-edit the scene, but you can't because you have bolted them down at certain points. Yeah. Um, but I feel like right now we've got a nice little balance. Austin gets up, he goes over here and then he goes back where he was. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. So, that's good. That's that's doing it, you know, correctly by the book to go back and reuse the coverage. So, mm -hmm. OK. So, but we are, so you were saying we are going to have some conversation while they're here, right? Yeah. Does he stay seated, Knox? Uh, yes, he does. Okay. Well, so that's a little trivial thing, but I don't think these should be the same camera height. Like either one, they should just be level. No, I, so the guy who's standing up is level on him and the guy yes. who's sitting down is level on him. I agree completely. Yeah. Well, it's either it's that not, or, it's, or, or it, put well, it's not a, like halfway. It's not a status thing. So... I'd like each of their own cameras at eye level. Okay, I agree. What do you think, Marcus? I agree, I agree. Okay, so how, how long does he stay here for? Uh, he's only got a couple of lines there. So uh, I think he probably stays there for what is now about half a page max. Half a page is quite a long time, so that's yeah. Okay. But he's <laughs> but remember the turn's gonna the turn's gonna change. It's gonna punctuate that a little bit as well, and he can start talking as he comes over to the glasses. But he the moment, but so he turns around, but doesn't come over with the glasses. I forgot the script does not. Yeah, so object. he doesn't. He does. He doesn't come over straight away. Okay, and the script supports that. Yes. Okay. Okay, so then they're back here. Why don't we just uh, finish this here? So I guess this is, is this a close-up on Knox 
for this for this line here is that his close up that we also use in the beginning yeah that's what that was so remember we had this well he's standing up here and then he sits down so then this camera would be shooting up in the beginning <laughs> Or we could just settle settle with him. You could be boomed up, and then the yeah. you, you can just drop. Yeah, the, let's do that. So, because if it's looking up at him and he's facing away, that is too much. So it's boom down and then uh, close up. Cool. Right. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. it is. Um, probably put it over here. Yeah. Um, okay, and we need like uh, the counterpart yeah. for here. Then yeah. these guys, so I still like these guys. So I think that we should like cover the first page after they sit down. We should just track slowly into it, but also get versions where we're just where we stay at the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. But I mean, this coverage up here, so that's pretty normal. I'm a little. You, I mean, like the the two purple cameras that are on the desk. Like, let's move those to where you'd actually shoot that from. Right, I don't think you'd actually put that camera hover. You you wouldn't put an overlay. No, though. well, I, you know I, I tend mean? to draw them where you think them because in reality they're probably going to be shot like here. Correct. Yeah, yeah. you should. I I, I kind of feel like you should put them there so that the crew knows where the camera body is. Yeah. Even though we know, right. you know what I mean. So you're trying yeah. to remove the interpretation. So this is a discussion it, that basically. I've had with a lot of people with shot designer because shot designer is basically right now in cartoon coordinates, meaning that yes. it's there's there's no rhyme or reason, but the 3D version will be in in proper coordinates because it has to because it's a real 3D space. Um, mm -hmm. So that's going to be that's going to be a given. Um, but Marcus, were you saying you place the cameras exactly where they're going to be just to remove ambiguity? Well, I just, a lot of times, if, if you don't do that, then your cinematographer will come up and go, oh, there's a diagram, but that doesn't mean anything. And you then, know what I mean? Then it's almost they'll pointless. Sort of like they'll sort of dismiss it. So you right. start so to reduce you, the credibility of the diagram, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So if you put the camera where the camera can physically go without, I mean, you can put the camera wherever you want. There's, there's grip equipment to do it, but clearly that's where you're going to shoot it from. So you should indicate it there. Well, the choice, so it just, the choice for him is more if he's trying to get the camera on top of the table or on a tripod out here. And that's like a big difference for the cinematographer. Exactly. And like, clearly, I don't think we've had any discussion that would motivate us like, let's, let's jump through the hoops to put the camera right on top of the table. Yeah. So clearly, we're kind of talking, it's, it's there where it's indicated currently. Mm -hmm. And so I think you want it there. So when your DP looks, at, I don't know, for me, it was always like a credibility thing. You yeah. don't, you know, oh, well, you don't know really how the camera's going to be. So that's just a cartoon. Right. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm just being perfectly honest. You're trying to win them over. You want them to believe yeah. that you exactly know your plan and that plan should be put cameras where they're actually going to be yeah. as closely as possible. Yeah. Okay. Right. I I I agree. So this is looking, you know, pretty much resolved. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um so the business coming in and the business walking over here, I'm not completely satisfied that, that there's good coverage on this. Okay. So. Um, like this, well, I mean, we have this one here. That's going to get in from the back. This one here could be used, like, for example, for the walk over here. I mean, in addition to, so we would do like two or three passes on this one here. So we have like a good pass on that. But then I would do a special pass that's just for his walk over. That's basically just a nudge to the right. Do you follow me? Do you? Um, I do I, not. I, no, I don't, I'm afraid. Okay, okay, we'll try again. So this camera here could just, in addition to whatever it does, we could do a special take that's just to cover. Is somebody typing? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Give me, give me one second. <laughs> okay, it's cool. I've, I've got another call that I'm supposed to jump onto, so I'm trying to, like, stall it. Okay. Uh, I mean, we're not far away. All right, okay. good. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I thought sorry that was pear. That. Like, I've got an amazing sorry. idea. Come on. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. It's sorry. cool. Okay, right, so let me explain. This yeah. camera here, in addition to whatever it does, we could get a separate version of it that just only covers his walk over here. That just tracks a little bit to the right. That has nice Copy. timing. So it's just like this. And then when, when he walks back, it's like a little bit of this. That's just time specifically for that walk. Because otherwise, this is just a back and forth that we'll just cut to when it's nice. Mm. 
Right. And would, just out of curiosity, like Marcus, would you, camera B, this one that, would you actually run that for the whole scene, r moving back and forth, just arbitrarily I, as coverage? I mean, I it's would. not hard. You would, okay. I would, so that you have it. Okay. okay. Right? You, you never really use your master, but when you need it, you're glad that you have that two beats of it. Yeah. And okay, also, cool. it's always good for geography. You know what I mean? Like, where are they? You know, you start yeah. doing single, 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 then you, you're you like, are we in a tent or are we in a, you know what I mean? You don't yeah. quite know where you are. Yep. So, I have one question here. Um, I... Let me first say that I also think this is possibly enough for a diagram because you kind of need to be looking through a lens before you can get, yes. come up with the remaining ideas. And I kind of like the idea of being under, like under blocked, so there's room for having an idea. Um, or at least, or over block on paper, knowing you're not going to shoot half of it, but then it's just note to self for things you might want to try. So I think this mm -hmm. would actually be good enough for showing up on the set. But I do have one question. Uh, because this is a terribly long scene. Go away, fly. Um, how are we... Like, are there some of these cameras that don't need to be recording the whole time? Like, for example, this master here, I guess you, for this one, you would tell the actors to, you know, please don't burn any energy. This is a master. We can hardly see you. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I mean, the master is the rehearsal, really, is, is how I, I do it. I feel like when you're rehearsing, a lot of times they don't really take it seriously unless the camera's running. So I kind of use the master as a rehearsal and I do it once, maybe twice, and then you have everything. You can't see really people's I've lips moving and things like that. I've on a regular basis doing that, only because if, if, we're, if we're shooting before we figure it out, like all their micro business over here, then as we keep working, we invalidate more and more of the master until I can't cut to it anymore because now he's wearing a different hat. I haven't had that problem because it's not, I'm not saying we do the master in lieu of, of, of uh, rehearsal. Okay. I'm saying you do your rehearsal pass, yeah. right? And you try to work all that stuff out when you're in, you're in the middle of them and you're like, blah, 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 maybe do this, maybe do that. Okay, let's try it out. They run it one or two times. Okay. Then you just, there's nothing left to do but go to start shooting it, yeah. right? And if you invalidate it, you should be invalidating it in the master. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you should do your discovery. So when you leave the master, that's kind of what the scene is. Yeah. So don't leave the master until you can. And obviously there can be little bits that you discover and adjust. Okay, I agree. Sure. So but what I would say, um, let me really quickly pair. All I would say is I agree with you about leaving the blocking di diagram sort of general. And this is just my own pet peeve. I kind of need to see the order we're shooting in, right? So we've got camera A and B. That makes perfect sense. The crew understands that. Then what? Then we do the blue one. Great. Is there something else that camera B can be doing when we're shooting the blue one? Can that camera C fit? Probably not because it's um, really I'm sorry. difficult to do anything else than camera B by itself. Because Correct. It, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Camera, cam. I'm sorry. The way that I I, I use the um, camera one A, camera one B. That's sure. how I do it. Mm -hmm. You have a sort of a naming scheme in the software. Let's see if we can do that. it just on colors because then I don't have to go label everything just so we can talk about no, it. No, no, no. Yeah. Of course. Of course. So what I'm saying is when you do the blue one on Austin side over Austin to Knox, is there anything else that can be shot when you do that? Probably not. Right. You're it's, talking it's about this one here. Well, I mean, you could potentially, uh, yeah, it depends on where you could, really. So the locked version of this, these two, if they were locked, I could figure out how to do those at the yeah, same time. Yeah, you could set that purple Great. camera further back and punched in if we decided that the lens Yeah, but it's just that I don't, don't want to do a right. lock shot at the same time as a moving camera that's going to end up in pretty much the same place. That sounds really right. hard. No, that, that, so, and all I'm saying is, let's. For me, it's worth it to have that discussion. So, right? okay, here's so my. I have an opinion about that. This track here is probably going to be alone, but we could say yeah. that the tracking part of this, we're only going to cover the part that matters. And once we have the track, we're going to say, okay, now we're just doing locked shots the, the rest of the way out. And then we can do this one, this one together. Might even do this one here if we were playing long passes and he actually walks over and back again. So then these three cameras can go at the same time. And it's basically the same in reverse. Okay. It's just yeah, that... I don't think you're going to get all three because you're only going to have two, but I, I, sure. I understand what you're saying. That, so yeah. all I'm saying is like that discussion is worth having yeah. so that because sometimes your crew is like, what are we doing next? What are yeah. we doing next? So you should have an idea. And then a lot of times your cinematographer or your gaffer or someone will be like, well, no, wouldn't it make more sense to do this? And you go, great. But they appreciate the fact that you've had the thought, right? Of course. 
Yeah. And so this shot out here is basically not even part of the shoot day. This is like a pickup from whenever. Yeah, I mean, Which that's going to... The one outside. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to stop pretty much when he sits down, if not earlier. And then this insert here is just also kind of an orphan camera that just needs to be shot. But he's also only there for like... Yeah, there's a seconds, couple of beats and then he steps out. So okay, and then yeah. I and then I guess you should uh, have have room for putting in a bunch of inserts, but which we wouldn't bother me with now. But I think, w like once you've blocked it out with the actors, I would take a little trip through the set and look for interesting inserts, and like hand maybe some hand business or whatever. And that's by the way, that's a great thing to do with multiple cameras. Is that if you really don't have two proper jobs for each camera, you can just have one of them shoot inserts. Just follow his hand, mm -hmm. right? And then you're always getting something useful. So, I think we did it. Okay, I'm cool with that. We beat, that was really we beat. It I mean, that was. I mean, I mean uh, all, all I would say is like, hopefully this was helpful. <laughs> and again, again, uh, for me, and I've, I do most of my work in television, but I'm, I'm going off to do a, a feature in, in a month or so when, when shooting resumes. Um, for me, the blocking diagram does two things and they're both super important. And the, the first one is obvious, tells you what the shots are. And the second one is it lets everyone on the crew relax because you have a plan. Yeah. Right. And so the reason why I prefer to use shot designer than like little widgets that you're drawing in pencil is that everyone can read and understand the plan. So every morning I send my blocking diagrams out to my typically to my AD and my second AD and my second AD distributes them to whomever wants them. Sometimes it's just a DP. Sometimes it's a studio. Right. Like it's day one on um, on this big television show and we're doing a big crash down a tunnel does he have a plan right are we gonna <laughs> yeah. get uh, you know is our money gonna get flushed down the toilet and so just having something that's this clear and not um pencil sketches lets everybody sort of relax yeah. right and that's why i that's why i keep sort of kicking everybody in the shin about label it tell me where we're turning around do this do this so that on the list it's like over right shoulder to this master of that turn around single of this master of that done <laughs> so yeah. your ad can look at that shot diagram and be like oh that's about two and a half hours yeah we'll be fine yeah. right if you give him that first blocking diagram he's gonna freak out <laughs> I don't, let I, me inject I don't a little note in clear. here about being under blocked um which is that there's a different way to get hurt which is to think oh we don't have that many shots i can just uh we'll go long on a bunch of shots and um, and take our time, and then suddenly you're crazy behind schedule. And yep. uh, so just because you do a minimal plan doesn't mean that you have all the time in the world. So you should still, like, you should be on the beat from the beginning. Why don't we mm -hmm. say that this was it, and we did it, and I, I like this. This is a, I can't wait to see how this turns out. I'm good with this. I would, I would cheat this tomorrow. This is cool. So I think... I think we did a good job on this blocking diagram here. I think that we, I think we're capturing the scene much better than what you had before, and I also think that um, it's probably a lot easier to shoot. So um, I have a couple of notes, just from a little bit of personal experience. You can you can throw this out if um, if you don't like it. But in terms of how you direct this with the actors, getting through four pages, four and a half pages of dialogue is murder. Like you you want to kill yourself when you're going through those four pages. And I think it's very important that that those four pages don't just become like drone words for you, that you're just, okay, then you sit here and then you talk for four minutes or eight minutes because this is actually, this yeah, this is like six, seven minutes of them just sitting and talking. I think it's very important that you are thinking subtext in this even more than you'd usually do. Like, subtext that's different from the text um what i mean by that is that people intend or have a different uh, there's a different meaning behind it than what they're presenting so that there's some that so that they so that it's layered well yeah the old adage is if two people are looking into each other's eyes across the table and both saying i love you i love you and meaning it you're fucked yeah. right Exactly. But the second part of that is that I think you should really look for ways to physicalize that. And for example, the example would be like somebody is somebody is like really confident and authoritarian, but it, but you, if you have an insert on his hand, he's doing like this with his pen. 
for example. Like that's physicalizing the subtext. He's not acting it at all. Acting wise, he's just being a hard ass. I'm not talking about this scene, but yeah, just somebody well, I'm, I'm who's very strong. But then, like, it leaks out. Yeah, in something places. that basically and, like a gesture that betrays the underlying feeling. Yeah, it could also be in the timing. Like, let's say, for example, that somebody so somebody disagrees with what somebody else says, and it's kind of you would expect him to answer right away, but he takes some time to time to put ice cubes in a glass and you're kind of waiting for his answer. Why doesn't he answer? And so there's all kinds of inner activity going on there that has nothing to do with acting. It's a choice. Like the difficulty is not in doing it. Anybody can do it. The, the cleverness is making the choice that here I'm going to take my time to put ice cubes in a glass or before I answer this, I'm just going to swirl the ice cubes a couple of extra times. And that sends the signal that I'm not completely on board or there's something I would say if I could or that kind of stuff. And I yeah. think if you could physicalize the subtext, then first of all, you would get all your inserts for free. Like we talked about once you have this scene here standing up and it's all re rehearsed and you're ready to shoot and you're now going to go around hunting for inserts. If you know how to physicalize the subtext, then all your inserts are already determined. Because you need to get that hand. You need to get him scratching his neck, whatever it is. Um, and that way where you create a difference between the inner and the outer. Like if you could go through the whole script and just for every like half page for each character just says, this is the outer, this is the inner. This is the outer, this is the inner. And then the outer stuff is the stuff that you're like capital A acting, like you're acting the outer. But the the inner is comes through in the pauses and in the in the logic of the scene and in how you're how you're handling yourself. Would that be the same thing as like a mask layer? Or would it that is, be different? It's a mask. It is a it is a mask. But so this is my personal theory that what makes acting interesting to watch is when there's a difference between the inner and the outer. Because when you're watching, like you're watching the performance and you think, wow, this is interesting. Aren't you trying to figure out what's really going on? Isn't yeah. that why it's interesting? It's like he says, he says that he loves her, but something about it seems insincere. Like it took him a second too long to say it. What's up with that? And now you're trying to read his the crazy logic that's in there. Like, or you have the the Cumberbatch Sherlock Holmes was interesting to watch because you're like, what the hell is that thought process out there that yeah. results in this weird behavior? And you can watch that for episode after episode, trying to figure out what the hell is going, what's, what's the thought process behind all of this? And I think that if you can itemize that and then come up with physical ways to show it, which is, by the way, something that, that a lot of actors really like, because it's not the kind of touchy feeling, oh, tell me about the character's childhood. It's like, do everything that you're doing now, but hold the gun wrong. And now you're holding the gun wrong, and now he just seems uneasy with the whole thing. And it doesn't even take any acting. It The character comes through in how you thought it. Yeah, and I mean, the great thing is, as well, as I'm actually, I'm going to be doing rehearsal off camera to begin with. I want to schedule a whole day of rehearsal before mm -hmm. this, maybe even more if I'm, if I can like get the, the cash together to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I really want, I do want to explore the subtext because I agree with you. If you're, if we're just in one room for 10 minutes chatting, doing this, text, this could be so stale. I mean, that's gun, yeah. gun to my head. Like that's the challenge I've got to get through, right? I either have the audience with me or I don't. Um, so so we've, I think we've got to I figure a way through it. I think you should change the rules for this right now. And then like right now you have the, an idea of the scene and what's going on inside of it. Um, I think, I think you need to give yourself a challenge or a permission to think way further outside the box. Like you need to go inside the script and fuck it up a little bit. Like okay. how much can you ruin this without ruining it? Because you're going to find some really interesting choices like what if they have a crush on each other secretly? Okay, that's like a brand new thing that would produce all kinds of new activity. Um, what if Knox is the superior? What if Knox is, what if uh, Austin is the superior? I mean, I'm just, I'm pulling stuff out of my butt here because it could be anything. It could be what if they have a crush on the same girl? 
Yeah, I mean, the idea is that you just throw stuff out there and see what behavior it changes, right? And where exactly. you end up. And yeah. you're going to make mistakes. You'll make mistakes when doing it, but you'll find some gold as well. And that's but that's that's the point is that we're iterating it the same way that that uh, that Silicon Valley would iterate a product. It's like it has a name in Silicon Valley. It's called failing faster. Like we know we need to get through a certain amount of failure as we're trying things. And the only way to get to a winning product is to start failing faster. And that's a great that's a great way to see it. Like you're not going to get through this without some amount of failure. You might just get busy with it. Right. And come up like come up with 10 ways that are definitely wrong. And yeah. two of those you will think, "Hmm, this is not as wrong as I thought." That's interesting. <laughs> and some of those ideas are going to grab you and now you're like, "Well, now I suddenly can't see the scene without it." Now, that's the stuff I'm really looking forward to kind of getting under. This is also the only thing I've ever written that has dialogue in it as well. So this is <laughs> this is really scary for me. Like you so mean we'll, dialogue? I mean, dialogue at all or this amount dialogue of dialogue? At, dialogue at all. I've only oh, so ever, the other shorts that you did, like the sci-fi oh, shorts. They I haven't written either. those. They were submitted by, by writer friends of mine. Oh, okay. I did so, not know that. I assume that. Well, well done. That's a good no, first no, try. No, no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but still... It's you, you, uh, you No, but you have ideas of how you wrote it. And then the part of the joy is then giving it to t actors to see it brought well, to life in a different way. You need way to do well. part of that work before you hand of, it to the actor. Of actors. course. Because he, here's the thing. Um, a good actor will try to find crazy, unusual subtext. But many actors will just try to take your text and be as faithful to it as possible. And that's going to kill it. Okay. Like you, because you can't be sure that an actor is going to take your, take your text and then basically reinvent, reinvent the whole brain activity of the character, which is what you want. Like, and even if they could, I don't think they assume they have their permission. So if you go there first, then they're going to realize that you're totally on board with this way of thinking, and then they're going to follow you there. But you need to be crazy first. Okay. That's cool. So, so basically, you want me to come in and basically and fuck it up first. Well, the thing is I'll that we call it we call it fuck it. it up, but that's only from the perspective right now of having a little bit of a rigid understanding of the scene. It's for you to get out of your box, because yeah. it seems other ways of seeing this scene seem crazy, but once you're out there, they seem much more plausible. Hey, this is actually much more interesting, and it's going to change the scene, but now you're going to have layers. You're going to have all the stuff they say, and then you're going to have all the stuff they really mean. Yeah, and I so, mean, it's going to live or die on that, isn't it, basically? The camera it, works, for not four, going to save it alone. Four pages of dialogue are going to slaughter you unless there's some inner activity in these characters. There's the challenge. It, it is so hard. Like even two pages of dialogue without, well, it's not just subtext, but subtext that you understand. Because if you don't understand the subtext, then you can't direct it either. Then yeah. the inside of the character is just as much a mystery to you as it is to the audience. And so then you then you can't direct it. Um, I, I think I've kind of always got a free pass because I've, I've always kind of cast... Improvis improvisational actors so I can part of me can be like ah, they'll do that's the good job. but that's fantastic hey. because improvisational actors have a very easy time going out there they just hey. need to know that they're not being bad by doing it of course but I think I've I, in a way I've almost used it as a crutch to like because so many directors are afraid of actors or afraid of speaking to actors or don't have a plan. So you can kind of come in and just be like, ah, these guys are going to take care of it. And But this is, I want to go in, this is the first time I really want to go in knowing exactly what I want, being able to explain yeah. it and then seeing where they take it. Yeah. So that's the, that, that, that would be my note here. At least give it a try. I will try, do. try oddball subtext and then see if you can physicalize it because this is great. There's nothing greater than an actor where being an actor and the director says, why don't you just do this physical adjustment that you can totally do that doesn't interfere with your character at all. And when you do that, suddenly just doing the physical action just gives you a surge of energy. Oh, wow, there's character in that. And that, the direction could just be, you know, you're facing him directly. It's just being like 10 degrees off. Mm. And any idiot can do that, but when you do it, you feel, oh my God, there's like a whole new, uh, they're interacting in a whole new way now. And you should come up with, uh, with some of those. 
So yeah. anyway, I've repeated it three times. So uh, <laughs> that's all right. Okay, <laughs> but I think it's I think it's a good point. And so no, it is. It don't is. be too faithful to the script right now. Like you need to stretch it, and then you can return to your understanding of the script. But just think in radical, radically different subtext, radically reinvented subtext. Okay. Yeah, this all is right. way cool. Mate, this okay. is awesome. I just uh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I look forward to seeing how this turns out. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon, Tristan. <laughs> All right, you take care of yourself, Pat. Okay, bye. Thanks, bye-bye. So I hope you thought that was interesting. If you have a real project you'd like to get some help with, get in touch via social media or hollywoodcamerawork.com. And as always, remember to like and subscribe and all that. And that's the episode. I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>